Welcome to the Outer Banks of North Carolina, a barrier island chain that is way out away from the coastline, which is kind of unusual. You can look at other coastlines around the United States. We can see barrier islands along the Gulf Coast or other barrier islands along the, uh, the East Coast, but these are way out away from the rest of the continent. So what's, what's going on here? Why, why is that? Uh, and what's with barrier islands anyway? Well, first off, we came out of the last ice age and all that ice melted and it caused sea levels to rise. Now the coastline was actually about 30 miles out that way uh, about 10,000 years ago or so. Uh, and if you look at a bathymetry map, which is basically the topography of the ocean, you can actually see the continental shelf and the slope out there and how it drops off. That's basically where uh, the coastline was when sea level was about 100 yards lower. Uh, so since then, sea levels come up and it's actually pushed these things really far back, but also it inundated everything that was kind of behind them. Uh, and so you had small canyons in North Carolina over here, canyons, valleys, that just got flooded. And now you have these massive estuaries uh, back in these sounds back, back behind us. Uh, now, where did all this sediment come from? Well, if we look at it, I can just do a little bit of geology and look closely. It's pretty fine grain, very well sorted quartz sand. You get a quartz sandstone, and this is basically what it is if you bust it apart. You can even see some structures here forming. You can see some little ripples along, along the ground just from the wind blowing. And I'm leaving my footprints here, but in a couple of days, they'll be gone just from the wind taking over uh, and causing this sediment to migrate around. Where did the sediment come from? Well, it's coming from up the shoreline to the north. Uh, you've got some massive rivers that are coming off the uh, Appalachian Mountains and they're just dumping all their sediment along the coastline and there's currents that are bringing it to the south and that's what's causing deposition on these barrier islands. Now, that's what's happened sort of prehistorically, but since we humans came around, we started damming up our rivers, we use them as river reservoirs, so it's actually providing a little less sediment. So there's issues out here where you've got coastal erosion, but everybody wants to live on the coasts and there's all sorts of rental houses and vacation spots and everything and they can't keep them there because there's just too much erosion. Not, not, not just because there's less sediment coming down the, uh, the coastline here, but also these barrier islands are extremely dynamic. Like, you know, if we ignore volcanoes, I could probably sit here and make an argument that this is one of the most dynamic spots on planet Earth. Uh, they're moving back at, I think about a meter and a half per year. There's like a yard, it's about five feet per year. They're moving back this way. So you can see the coastline out at the edge behind me over here. Uh, you can run some math. That's maybe 300 yards away. Um, what, a thousand years? It's, is that, that's too much. So in a few hundred years, this is gonna be migrating all the way back. And every now and then there's viral videos of these houses that are just collapsing into the ocean whenever a hurricane comes through. Cause when those storms come through, they just really exacerbate all that erosion uh, and cause a lot of problems. But uh, yeah, it's just massive deposition. We can look around here, we can see all these dunes that the wind is just pushing them around and these plants are kind of holding them in place, but one decent little hurricane uh, will pretty much completely change this landscape. Uh, and it's just a really changing place. You can come here from one year to the next and it'll just look completely different. So definitely an interesting place in terms of sedimentary geology and, and active sedimentation. Uh, and there's kind of this fight between uh, humanity and, and nature that's all going on here. And, you know, it, it costs money. Uh, I just spent about a week here. You can see dredging ships that are off the coast and they are constantly moving and somebody's paying for that. And uh, they're dredging up the sand and dumping it back on the, uh, onto the coastline, onto the beaches, or they're dredging it, trying to keep air lanes open for ferries to go back and forth between the gaps of these barrier islands. And if you actually look here behind me, there's a gap between these uh, barrier islands called the, uh, the Oregon Inlet. And there's a big bridge now that goes across it. You can see there's a lighthouse way back there, a little black and white lighthouse uh, to try and, you know, historically at least uh, warn boats coming and going. Uh, and typically if you're out here on a ship, you see a lighthouse, you're gonna freak out because you're just too close to the coastline and you don't exactly know where anything is because again, the sand is migrating so quickly over time. Uh, it was really interesting being on a ferry and watching them have to do uh, dodge sandbars. Uh, literally right there, we can we can see, you know, it's a fairly big boat, and you can see that, uh, oh, there's sand five feet down. Oh, there's sand five feet down. You're just trying to, 
barely cut between it. Meanwhile, we're being followed by a big, uh, big sand dredging Army Corps of Engineers ship. So, yeah, pretty interesting place. Uh, quite a bit different than what we'll see in the mid middle part of the continent, but this is something that's been around for, uh, you know, this process has been around for ages and ages, and occasionally it gets preserved, and we can actually see this in sedimentary rocks. We can see the sedimentary structures that these dunes create, and you can see the ripples that are on here. So if you somehow did bury a lot of this system uh, and were able to preserve it, then yeah, it shows up a lot in our, uh, in our rock records. So whenever I look at a quartz sandstone, this is one of the things I kind of picture, or if I go hiking out near, uh, uh, Lincoln Lake, west of Fayetteville. Uh, this is kind of what I picture whenever I see those cross beds. I picture sand dunes migrating around on a, on a beach like this, and maybe even, you know, birds or the ancestors of birds or something similar to birds uh, that were living long ago, uh, squawking around trying to, to lay their eggs and nests and all that, which is what we have going on back here. So, yeah. Barrier Island. Uh, I'll see you in class.